The records of the two teams have been somewhat misleading because the way it stands right now, both teams are playing good football. Illinois is playing great at the moment, did not play well at the beginning, but the big news is they have both now suffered at least a loss in the Big Ten, and Illinois has that gigantic tie hanging over its head right now with Michigan. But the positive side for Illinois is they are playing better football. Last week, of course, their defense played magnificently. Coach White wants to get a complete game from both sides of the football. Maybe today will be that day. We have not had it to date. The defense or offense have been playing well in one game or another and hopefully it'll be today that they put the whole game together final thought here it's a very cold day in Iowa City it's not even 40 degrees it's windy about 20 mile an hour coming right into the players we have two teams that throw and play razzle as offense is this weather going to be a factor well it'll certainly be a factor if it rains again it's rained all morning it's very damp it's a very damp cold out there so your hands will lose a little bit of the feeling but if it does not rain this afternoon the only important part will be in the kicking game and of course you know that's very very important we'll be back with our opening kickoff after these messages Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Hardee's, where good people... ...rank number one and a team that has had a great season. They've had a bad half at Columbus last week against Ohio State, but they've had a good season. They have been a team that has not done very well in kickoff returns. They are last in the conference. And in terms of offense, it's almost a mirror in terms of ratios. They rush a little more, but basically, percentage-wise, they live by the pass. Chris White's second attempt is on the way. That's Kevin Harmon at about the three-yard line. And that's where Chuck Long and company will begin first and ten to open up this game. A game that neither team can lose. You get to a point, Jim, where you just have to win, and we're here. And no more ties. No more ties. Chuck Long comes into this game, the quarterback for the Iowa Hawkeyes, a man who could have gone pro this year and elected to go a fifth year, as the did a couple of players on this team because they think they could go to the Rose Bowl and win it all. Chuck Long, a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. David Hudson, a freshman fullback, and of course, Ronnie Harmon, all-world tailback. They're coming with a single back offense, three wide receivers. And they show that. They show pass, but they go run. Ronnie Harmon had a tremendous game a year ago against... Illinois, but he has not practiced this week. He has been hurt. And the man you saw there is a sophomore, David Hudson. The receivers are super. Happel, Hevelton, and Flag. Really a dynamite set of receivers. And the offensive line now is mastered not only pass blocking, but run blocking as well. Defensively, what do you say about this group? Davis, Baum, Tiefen, Tiller, Gibson. You can't play better than they did a week ago against Michigan. Second down and one. There was a big pickup. As again, David Hudson is the lone back. And he gets the one and then some. Gleaming in there on the stop as they begin to unstack for the Illini. Also in there, Mark Taggart. Sebring, Taggart, and Gleamy, a busy trio of linebackers for Illinois. And then Avery, Swope, White, Harkey. The defensive backfield has been rearranged from time to time, but I think finally, Jim, they found their way as well. It is now first and 10. The ball resting at the Iowa 33-yard line. The Hawkeyes have had trouble with turnovers. They self-destructed last week in the second half against Ohio State. Long is a great passer, but he's prone to interception. Four against the Buckeyes in one game. As he goes to the air for the first time. No pass that time. Scott Davis, the man who leads this team of quarterback sacks, just picked up number seven. You just saw the pocket just collapse around Chuck Long. He had time on a short pattern, but he looked like he was going to the intermediate range, could not get it off. We'll see right now. You don't really beat the tackles here, but Gibson and Davis just could make the pocket collapse around Chuck Long. We'll see it right there. Davis and Gibson both get part of that sack. Second down and 14 now for the Iowa Hawkeyes is Chuck Long. It's on the verge of setting some records, which we'll talk more about later in this game in terms of touchdown passes. The Lion I are showing blitz, and Chuck Long wisely calls a timeout. A little confusion there, I guess, or maybe the play he had called was not going to work against what Illinois showed was a blitz. On second down and 14. Chuck Long is going to put it up. And he's got all kinds of time. Bill Happel on the reception. It's a first down for Iowa. On 
single stop that time, Jay Lynch. Well, we'll see a sprint out to the right side, and this can be a very, very dangerous pass. Chuck Long now looking downfield. Now he's going to throw back. That's a long pass. It gives the defense a chance to react, but the Illini defense did not react well to Happel's reception. Bill Happel is the fifth leading receiver in the Big Ten this year. He's not a real fast man, but he has a way of getting open. That's Harmon, his first carry today. The man is quick on his feet. Mark Taggart on the stop. Well, of all the running backs we have seen this year, Donnie Harmon may have the quickest feet. His ability to stop, you'll see right here, he's going to take it outside. Now look, back to the inside, looks like he should be tackled. Boy, he's got great feet, great balance, and he can cut. If you take the Iowa stats right now and you add up every attempted rush by everybody other than Ronnie Harmon, they still don't equal the amount of attempts Harmon has had. He is their running attack. Long is going for six. He's got Smith wide open. Iowa six, Illinois nothing. Well, they got Robert Smith. He's their speedster at flanker, isolated on Lance Harkey on a post pattern. We'll see right now a partial rollout by Chuck Long. He fakes down one pump. Now he's looking to Smith on that post. We'll see Smith open. Right there, he's got Harkey beat by three steps. A try to make the stop, but not in time. It's six points for Iowa. With that touchdown pass, he's now tied an Iowa season record at 21 for the year. Bob Howland makes it good. And at 11.54 to go in this first quarter of play, we are sitting now with a 7-0 game in favor of Iowa. We'll be back with more Illini football after this. Jones back for Illinois. Kind of a sliver. Keith Jones. Nice return. Well, the Illini offense come out down 7-0. Well, we see Jones once again taking a kickoff back and not putting any moves on, one, on any of the tacklers. He just goes into them, try to barrel them over. I think he subscribes to the theory the shortest distance between two points is a straight line no matter what's in front of him. That's right, over somebody. <laughs> well, it's first and ten now as we look at the backfield for Illinois. Trudeau, Rooks, and Ray Wilson. Jack Trudeau is having a super Big Ten season. David Williams. It's an end around that doesn't get around, and we got a loose football on top of it. And we got a bunch of happy Hawkeyes. Pat Peterson recovers, and all of a sudden, the fighting Illini are digging a hole for themselves. Well, if you had to pick any scenario, if you're an Illini fan, the way it should not happen, it's happening, folks. A long pass play for a touchdown for the Hawkeyes on the first offensive play. A fumble by David Williams on an end around. A little razzle-dazzle that misfired for the Illini. We have seen this many times. It is a tough spot to be in. And the Illinois defense, which has played great of late, really will be tested right now. First and 10 at the Illinois 19-yard line. Chuck Long, back to pass again, looking for a second scoring drive of this game. Boy, he's got all kinds of time. It's in, and what a great reception by Bill Happel. I wasn't sure if he got his feet in, but I think he did. The official was right there. The official was right there. All he needs is one foot. Boy, I just credit the offensive line of, of the Hawkeyes with great protection. We see Chuck Long now running for his life. And he finds Happel. Happel does a fine job of coming back for the ball. Open right along the sideline. He got the foot in. Big first down for Iowa. Second pass reception for Happel. He's now caught two for 29 yards. And for Chuck Long, he's three out of three in this game. First and goal to go at the four. Power eye formation. Now the first time we've seen that. David Hudson just kind of pulls his way forward. 
No real hole there, Will, but their offensive line once again did the job. They just pushed the Illini defense back. Well, it's going to be second down now and a yard to go. Well, it's a yard to go, and you want two, three tries to get there. A tough spot to be in if you're Illinois. A great spot to be in if you're Iowa. Up and over. How far up and how far over, we don't know yet. That's David Hudson on the carry for the second time. And the indecision tells you it's not going to be third down in inches. Of course, the fans here don't like the call. We will see the handoff to Hudson going on top. Comes up just short, but third down and just inches to go for another touchdown for Iowa. In the game now is Fred Bush. He was a starting fullback earlier in the year before David Hudson took that job away from him. We're third and inches. We'll call him the Flying Hudson. David Hudson going on top once again, this time for six points. 10-16 to go in this first quarter, and all of a sudden we got a 13-0 game. Well, the one thing that I was doing, they're taking advantage of the one mistake so far. There we see David Hudson going on top again, but there was a hole. He didn't even have to go up high. He could have run it in. That's his third touchdown rush of the campaign, and all of a sudden, Rob Howland, who's in a scoring battle with Chris White for kicking honors in the Big Ten season, is out for the second time. A line drive, that's good. And how fast can you be down 14-0? Well, as we said before the ball game, you and I, Will, were talking, turnovers are going to be, a, could be a key factor. And when you get down seven to nothing and then turn the ball over on your first offensive play, you certainly have put the momentum in your opponent's corner. Now it's the test. Can the Illini come back? In the last couple of games, Illinois has done quite well offensively. They have moved the ball against everybody, but they've sort of self-destructed once they got close. So maybe we got that break out of the way early, and now it's time to go on and play some football. Yeah, well, we must say that on the first series, uh, David, they came with an end around with David Williams, and Iowa was there to stop it. They did a good defensive job. There we see Mike White talking to Jack Trudeau. What are you going to do, folks? And there's Jack shrugging his shoulders. Saying, I don't know. We'll just go back and see what we can do. We were talking about the end-of-round runs. Really, Illinois has not done that much this year. Well, a couple years ago, Iowa did many of them against Illinois, and it was a key factor in the ballgame. They had end-of-rounds and passes by the end on an around play, and uh, it really hurt the Illini. So I guess Mike White will give him a little bit of your own medicine, but it didn't work. Dale Usher will be back for Illinois along with Keith Jones. Jones leads the Big Ten in kickoff returns. He's 23rd nationally. Mr. I'm going to run you over. Jones has done a pretty good job of getting the ball back. A long high kick. That's Jones. I'll tell you what, Iowa came to play some football. George Davis made the tackle. He's their linebacker on the inside. Good coverage by the Hawkeyes. Well, we're 10-10 here as we look now at the backfield again for these fellows who were out there for a play, and now they're here. They'll come out a little bit longer this time. Good receivers, Williams, Pierce, and Anthony Williams, who's playing hurt right now, so he may or may not be a factor. Dennis Jeriga, Scarlett Kehoe Ward, they've become a good offensive unit. It is first and 10 at the 14. Jack Trudeau. Nice reception by Pierce. And all of a sudden, Illinois gets some field position as Ken Sims makes the stop. And give Jack Trudeau some credit. Now, he had George Millette right in his face. He did not get the ball off with much zip because of Millette's rush. But it was effective. Big first down for the Illini. Stephen Pierce has been the man who really has helped David Williams in the entire passing game because he's a deep threat like Williams, and that gave Jack Trudeau one more little arsenal in his weaponry. And his first and ten, the ball now at the 35-yard line. That's Rooks. Rooks is airborne, courtesy of Ken Sims. Sims is only 177 pounds. He's picking up on Rooks, who's 215 and 6'2". 
Is that what you call a load? <laughs> That's a load. Thomas Rooks on a pitch out. There's the tackle by Sims. Hey, good tackle by Ken Sims, the left cornerback. Hey, I don't know about that uh, somersault there by Thomas Rooks. Well, Rooks has to average 61 yards a game from this game on to top my running mate's record here, Jim Grabowski at Illinois. And it's going down to the wire. Jack Trudeau to pass. He's one for one today. And the pass completion record without interception is over. Jay Norvell, who leads the Big Ten in pass interceptions, has brought the streak to an end. Jack got the ball floating, a high thrown ball. Not very well done by Jack Trudeau. We'll see right now, he's got plenty of protection. He's looking over the field, trying to find someone. Now look, the ball just floats a little bit. It's thrown high, intended for Cap Bozo. A deflected ball into the hands of Jay Norvell. And as you said, the record is, is ended. It stops at 215 overall and 283 in the Big Ten. And I was on the attack, and that's Ronnie Harmon. An exciting run for eight yards. You said it, Will. He is an exciting runner. His ability to stop and start is amazing. There's Jack Trudeau talking to Coach White. The last time a pass was picked off by Trudeau was way back at the Nebraska game. And the last time somebody picked off one of Trudeau's passes in the Big Ten was October 27, 1984. Mike Mallory got one when they played Michigan. It's a long time to go without a pass interception. Second down to three. David Hudson on the carry. Rob Gleamy on the stop. And as a final note of the Jack Trudeau record, that is an NCAA record that will be really tough to break. We'll just see a straight handoff to David Hudson, the fullback. Not much of a hole, but they didn't need much. And it'll be close for the first down. Well, so far in this game, it's basically been run, run, run to set up the pass for Iowa. And when they have passed, they have been deadly. What do you say, about a half yard? About Maybe a half yard. yard. Of course, well, that's the kind of offense you love to have. If you can run that football and pick your spots when you throw it, you'll move the football. Well, so far, the running has been done for the most part by the fullback, David Hudson. Hudson's has carried the ball now six times for a grand total of 17 yards. He's carried all in short down situations, short yardage situations. Harmon's carried the ball a couple times for 12 yards. It is third and short. It looks like first and 10. Quarterback sneak. When you got big men up front, as Iowa does, those sneaks will be effective on third down. Well, Chuck Long, like Jack Trudeau, is not one of the more nimble runners in all of college football. We'll see the sneak right here. Good search from the interior part of the line. That's Seidlinger, Humphrey, and, and Crotch in the middle. 7.40 to go in this first quarter of play. We're in Iowa City, Iowa. Mike Side, Will Teamer with Jim Grabowski. And the Hawkeyes lead this one 14-0 already. Chuck Long, he wants to make it more. He's got Robert Smith open. Unbelievable. And he beat a great player in Craig Swope. Similar type of play that Smith scored on the first series. Post pattern down the middle. This time it was Craig Swope in pursuit, but the ball was well thrown right on target. And Robert Smith shows his speed and picks up his second touchdown of this first quarter. We'll see Long with protection. He is going to Smith all the way. You'll see Smith coming to picture. He's got a step on Swope. Well thrown ball and a good reception for Iowa. Rob Howland into attempt to point after. And for the third time in this game, and this game isn't very old, he's good. And it's now 21 0. And it's 728 to go in the first quarter. The line have failed to move the ball and punted it back to the Hawkeyes, who take over on their own 36. Last game for both teams if they want to go to Pasadena come December or should say January 1st. Ronnie Harmon can't get around the likes of Lance Hartke or Bob Sebring. 
Yeah, but your heart beats a second beat when, when Ronnie Harmon gets to the outside. Play designed to go off tackle, but he reads the block, takes it outside. Now, what's that move again? I'll tell you, folks, he does have some moves. This time, Harkey played it well, made the tackle. He's averaging about five yards coming into this game per carry. He did not practice this week. He was hurt. Ronnie Harmon goes to his big tight end, Mike Flagg. Harkey on the stop. Also over there was Ed White. When it goes right, it goes right. And it's really going right right now for Iowa. When you're, when you're hot, you're hot. Sprint out by Chuck Long once again to get away from the rush. This time to the first reception to his tight end. I believe the Illini defense now have become very conscious of the wide receivers. And now the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to the tight end, Mike Flagg. The one thing the Iowa offense does is that they pretty much equally distribute the passes. Chuck Long, he's looking for more passing. This time he just flat out overthrows Scott Helberson. And a good rush put on Chuck Long by Scott Davis, the left defensive end. He forced Long to get rid of the ball quickly. Look at those numbers. Five out of six, 134 yards, two touchdowns. Still 4.52 to go here in this first quarter of play. If you watch this line, you'll notice that the tight ends, Mike Flagg and or Craig Clark, they both stand up. They do not get down. That's the only place I've seen it on any team. Uh, Hayden Fry instituted that years back. I'm not sure why. I have a great story I'll tell you about that. Chuck Long. Looks like he was trying to set up a draw play there. Good defensive maneuver by Todd Avery. Well, the Illini came with the blitz, forced Long out of the pocket. They had to rush his throw, but almost another reception. Back to that, that story about the tight end. When he was at North Texas State, he ran out of tight ends, and he had to move a receiver into that spot, and the guy was so short he couldn't see. So he had to stand straight up to check out the defensive alignments to block, and it worked. So he said, hey, if it works, don't fix it. <laughs> That's right. Third down and 10 now. Something unusual for the Hawkeyes in this game. And one out of one on third down conversion. Make it two out of two. Ronnie Harmon is off to the races. It is 27 to nothing, and we're still at 436 to go in this first quarter. Unbelievable, Will. The Hawkeyes really mixed up the Illini defense. In a third long situation, they go to a sprint out draw to Donnie Harmon, and look at this acceleration through the hole. Right there, the, the official almost stops Harmon. But, folks, when he's got the football, he's dangerous. Right here at this point, it's all she wrote. No one's going to catch Harmon. And it's another six for Iowa. Ronnie Harmon has scored seven touchdowns this season. He's our leading scorer. Rob Hallen makes it four straight. I've not seen one of these games in a long time. 4.36 to go in the first quarter. And now you've got to get some offense going just to prove to yourself you're still in the same stadium. Yeah, when, you're, when you're in this kind of situation now, you're getting out of your game plan. Illinois is going to have to put the ball up. And, of course, for Iowa, they can, they can do anything they want. They can gamble. They can rush the passer at all times. You know the short stuff's not going to hurt you. But once again, I say I've seen bigger comebacks. It's 28 to nothing and still the first quarter, so the Illini still have time. That 46-yard run is the longest of the season for Iowa. The longest previous run was Ronnie Harmon of 41 yards. So not only is Chuck Long rewriting some personal records today, it looks like Iowa's rewriting their season best record book, and we're still waiting for the first quarter break. Iowa has had the ball five times in this game. As we look at Keith Jones to the top of your screen, few to the bottom side of it. Keith Jones is going to see more action here before the first quarter than he sees in most games. I can't believe that. 28 to nothing. You look at scores between these two teams in head-to-head -head competition, Illinois looks much stronger. That's Keith Jones. That is the best kickoff return man in the Big Ten. But that also exemplifies what's happening here in Iowa City. 
Illinois was only able to move the ball seven yards in three plays and had to punt again to the Hawkeyes. It's second and seven on the Illinois 37. was undoing a week ago at Columbus was five turnovers in the second half which led directly or indirectly to 16 Buckeye points and so far in this half they do not look like the same team that played at Columbus one week ago long in the flats that's when it has the ball or I should say early Quinn early on the reception you could see that the cornerbacks of the Illini who have been burned so often in this ball game are really playing loose so those out patterns are there we'll see long again he's going to early on the out parent pattern all the way you'll see right now now an Illini defender Harkey comes into the picture that's Chuck, cushion, what you call cushion, but too much cushion. Chuck Long in the day is 8 out of 10 for 171 yards already. And those are first quarter numbers. And they just got bigger as Robert Smith falls down. Has a break. And that is not a good break right there. Robert Smith, who gave up track to play football, who is the big team threat, the speedster. Looks like he just slipped and went down the wrong way, Jim. Yeah, he's going to the short pattern right here on the Smith. Now, we'll see, we, see, we see it right now. His leg just looked like it gave out on him there, caught on the turf, and he is hurt, folks. In a game like this, Jim, where you've got a semi-wet turf, how does that affect things in general? Well, normally on a, a turf when it's wet, you should slide better. Uh, of course, I've always hated this stuff anyway, the artificial things. I like grass, real natural grass. Aiden Fry, who could probably run for governor, mayor, anything he wants to in the state of Iowa. Done quite a job here. 19 consecutive losing seasons until Hayden Fry came to Iowa. That's an amazing turnaround. Well, we certainly hope that Robert Smith is okay because he is a treat to watch play football. This Iowa team for five weeks is rated number one in the country, and folks, I'll tell you what, they got my vote the way they look in this first quarter. Second down and four, the ball to the 22-yard line. <laughs> Bill Happel again brings Iowa in the first down territory, this time at about the 11-yard line as Todd Avery makes a stop for Illinois. And, Will, they're going with the short outs, about a 10-yard out, so Chuck Long is not taking a five-step drop. The pass rush is getting great difficulty even getting close to him, and the Illini defense is playing off, so you can pick apart them all day with those kind of patterns. That's Apple's third reception of the game. First and 10, the Hawkeyes can get a first down without scoring. What a great move that time, David Hudson. Well, well, it's, it's starting to get ridiculous. It, it looks like the Illini have left their hearts and their ability back in Champaign. Nine seconds ago in the first quarter, we are now looking at a 34 nothing deficit. Rob Howland is in again. David Hudson scores for the second time this game. This looks like batting practice for him. It's up and it's good. There was no further scoring in the period. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Iowa 35 and Illinois nothing. Second down, 16. The ball now at the 14-yard line. Jack Trudeau has time. Cap Bozo makes the reception short. On the stop was George Davis. The Hawkeyes are taking anything deep away from Illinois, so Jack's got to find the short receiver. And the Hawkeyes are willing to give up that five, six yard area because they know it's a long march down to their end line. We'll see right here, Jack's got all kinds of time. I was only going with a three man rush, so you go to the short man Bozo, but it's a short game. George Davis and Larry Station. What a pair of linebackers. Station has led this Iowa team in tackles the last three years, soon to be four. Williams. 
First down. That'll be the first time Illinois has converted this entire game. Nate Queer makes the stop for the Hawkeyes. Williams needs to average about 13 catches a game to become the all-time leading NCAA receiver. That is his third today. We see once again Trudeau has time to throw the football. This time he found a receiver. David Williams open for the first down. Now you talk about this Iowa defense. Their strong safety, Nate Norvo. He is first in the Big Ten in interceptions. He already has six. He's got one today. And his running mate is a walk-on. He's been a special team guy for the most part. He's really proving himself. Thomas Rooks. That was a pretty tough hit to drop the football. Norvo makes the stop. Jay Norvo was a fella here, Jim, that was a special team guy for like three years. And now, all of a sudden, he's the hottest defensive back in the conference. Seven interceptions. Jack now deciding to run, but at the last second, he's, no, I don't want to run the ball. I'll give it to someone else. Let him take the hit. Second down 10. The ball resting at the 33-yard line of Illinois. 8.50 to go on a dismal day at Kinnick Stadium. Otherwise, for the Hawkeyes, it's a bright day. Iowa leads at 35-0. Trudeau, loose football. Illinois gets it back. Well, I've seen games where nothing goes right, but this is a game where nothing is going right for one side. That's the Illinois side. This time, pressure, good pressure put on by 57 Rees, and also, also by Drost. Ball stripped loose, now it's bouncing around, and finally, Mark number 79, Dennis. Mark Dennis. Or it could be Brian Ward. One or the other, but it was a white other. jersey. White jersey. Look at those graphics. Two lost fumbles. And it's third and 14. Iowa's coming with everybody. Giving chase is Davis. It's a ground ball that doesn't count. Jack Trudeau has thrown the ball 10 times, a handful of completions, and only 56 yards. Well, Jack had Eric Wyckoff open initially, but he was running for his life. He tried to signal Wyckoff to take it to the outside. They just didn't, Wyckoff didn't read his signal, and the ball was thrown incomplete. Chad Little's having a good day, averaging 45 yards a kick. That's Bill Happel back deep. Iowa, unlike many teams, will use their, their primary players in the special teams. Little to punch from about his own 15-yard line. Apple waiting for it at his 30. It's a low kick. The short man makes the reception, and with that, again, good time for Iowa to take over. Uh, Illini football continues after these local messages. The Hawkeyes approaching midfield. Chuck Long has been a master today. A lot of time. Little drop-off pass to Craig Clark. Even Clark makes the most of it. As the backup tight end for Iowa gives the Hawkeyes another first down. And again, Iowa doesn't need three. They only take two. You'll see on the replay now that Long once again has all kinds of time to throw the ball. Now he's going to his third receiver right now, and that's Craig Clark. Now watch this. Two white jerseys, and he gets by both of them. sure when Max McCartney, the defensive head man for Illinois, shows these films, it'll be a, a preview that I think a lot of guys might want to miss. It's the draw play. Finally, Kelly makes a stop along with Sebring and Gleamy. That Harmon you're seeing there is not Ronnie, but younger brother Kevin Harmon. And that Kevin Harmon shows that he has ability to stop on that dime and start again. Right now, draw play. And Kevin Harmon now wants to stop right here. Taking it to the outside. Good quickness again. The offensive guard, Tom Humphrey's looking like, well, what do I do? Get out of his way. Second down and four. The ball resting at the 38-yard line in the line eye territory. Long to pass. Another strike. Halverson on the reception. And it's another first down for Iowa. On the stop for Illinois 
it was Lane Tarkey. This Chuck Long is something. Well, oftentimes in practice, you'll, you'll move the ball up and down the field. It's kind of a no, no tackling drill, and that's what this looks like. Sprint out, short man Halverson on an out pattern. Good block out in front right there by Happel. And Harkey coming up to make the tackle. Iowa is fundamentally sound everywhere. They sure look it today. First and 10. Harmon on the carry. Kevin Harmon gets a good group, seven, eight yards on that one. We see him on stack, Jay Lynch. That Illini defense has been out on the field this whole first half. You'll see another Harmon, number 28, coming through the hole. Not much of a hole, but he makes the best of it. Clock running at 6.08 in this first half of play. Chuck Long, a short pass to Halverson. It only took five Illini to get him down. Scott Halverson, a 6'2", 195-pound wide receiver, walked on here, and he's been a fixture ever since. Well, they're using that play so effectively. They know, again, that the Illini are one-on-one -on -one coverage. So a little sprint out. Go to the short man on a five-yard out. It should be there 80% of the time, and it's been there 90% of the time. And you see Halverson just struggling for the first down. In this drive is converted on three second down situations all by pass <laughs> Kevin Harmon he's looking for the outside finally gets tripped up by Ed Wright you got to have someone forcing the cornerback linebacker someone has to get penetration and there wasn't any there for, for the Illini, and Harmon got to the outside. Wasn't a huge gain. You'll see right now, he takes it in now outside, and there's no force. There's not a white jersey in the picture until you see 16 Ed White coming up to trip up Kevin Harmon. When early now comes in for Iowa with a play from the sidelines. Happer will take a break. It is second down and four now for the Hawkeyes. a timeout because he was really running out of time. He only had a couple seconds to get the play off, but he didn't like what he saw, so with that, he's going to talk about it. And I believe that's his third timeout of this first half. He has no more. He cannot stop play anymore. Not that it matters much to him when you're up 35 to nothing. You know what's most amazing about this, this lopsided score is that Iowa is doing this against a good football team. This is, for those who were critical of Iowa's opening opponents in the preseason, uh, this blowout right now is against a good team. A team that really, I thought, was starting to play football up to their abilities. But you know, well, I've seen many, many games have been blowouts, and when you watch the films and you'll see the ability of the two teams, you realize that they're not that much different. On another day, on another game, it could be the other way. And right now, Illinois is probably hoping for another game and another day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this one over. 35 nothing at 535 remaining in the first half. It does seem somewhat peculiar to say that Iowa might be going to ice it here and before the half is over. Before the half is over. The most points Illinois has scored this season against any one opponent was 38 against Wisconsin. And to put this in perspective, Illinois beat Ohio State, a team that Iowa couldn't handle a week ago. Chuck Long, all kinds of time. No good. Controlled collision there. Greg Swope makes a good hit on Scott Halverson. We have a flag in the end zone. We have Craig Swope not getting up very quickly. We got Halverson laying down, Swope laying down. That must have been a real hit. We'll see Chuck Long with all kinds of time to throw the ball. He's look, He can't believe now he has that much time. Quarterback starts getting nervous after about five, six seconds. He's on target to Halverson, but it's the hit right there by Swope that jarred the ball loose before he had control. And you'll see it now rolling on the ground for an incompletion. It is third and four. It's a first down. Kevin Harmon on the carry. I believe that the Hawkeyes
always expected the Illini to blitz, which the Illini did, so they came with the option. And Harmon is a dangerous man to allow it outside. You know Chuck Long doesn't want to run the ball. He gets it off to Harmon, and Harmon can turn the corner now, waiting for his blocking to form. He gets out along the end line, picks up the first down, and the Hawkeyes are threatening once again. First and goal to go at the two-yard line. Look at those first downs, 21 to two. Chuck Long, touchdown. That is a Big Ten record. Nobody in the history of the Big Ten has thrown for more touchdowns in a career than Chuck Long. And the man who brought it in was his big tight end, Mike Flagg. It was an excellent fake of the, to the dive man out of the eye formation. Long had protection, found Flagg the tight end. Chuck Long decided to come back to pass Iowa to the Rose Bowl. And right now he's making their chances look good, even though they will need some help. Outland, point after. It's good. And at 5.16 to go in this first half of play from Iowa City, it's Iowa 42, Illinois nothing. The amazing thing about this score that you see is that if we were to flash onto the screen, Jim, the scores of the teams each team has played, you'd say, well, Illinois has done a better job against common opponents, and they have. Well, they beat Ohio State and tied Michigan, whereas the Hawkeyes lost to Ohio State, beat Michigan by two points with a last-second field goal. So I guess you're right. <laughs> you would say that. ball no return well there's 516 to go here in this uh, first half of play and Illinois is still trying to find answers to questions solutions to problems and so far there's no answers and there's way too many problems and no solutions 42 nothing the Iowa defense which we mentioned that has been rebuilt is third in the in the Big Ten, 10th in the country. How they can rebuild a team like this and be so good is really a credit to the coaching staff. A little confusion on the Illinois side of things. Finally, Jack Trudeau gets the snap. Forward progress. Anthony Williams, who's playing hurt, makes the catch. George Davis on the stop with some help from Jay Norville of Iowa. I'm surprised they got the playoff. It was a total picture of confusion. Receivers didn't know where to go. Jack going to the short man, the tight end, Anthony Williams. But again, Iowa's willing to give those up. Three-yard gains are not going to hurt them. Clock running at 4.45 remaining in the first half of play. Anthony Williams getting his first start of the season. Wide open is Pierce. So for Pierce, that's his second reception of this game. That's a second straight completion for Jack Trudeau. Once again, Illinois' linebackers are taking deep drops. They're giving the underneath stuff to the Illini. There you'll see Stephen Pierce wide open. Making a move here now on Jay Norville. Now decides, hey, I'm going down. I got the first down. First and 10. flags everywhere on that by the way Illinois in this game Jim has yet to cross 50 yard line <laughs> yeah if you say it's in favor of one team it certainly is every statistic here that we can come up with folks is in favor of the Hawkeyes even that one penalties the Illini have been penalized more than Iowa you have to think when you're up 42 nothing it's not quite as cold and windy as when you're down 42 oh, when you're down 42 to nothing it's awfully cold out there 415 to go in the first half of play you know overall in this season Iowa has held its opponents in third down conversions to only 28 percent so this defensive performance is not a fluke I mean this has happened before 
But finally, Jack Trudeau is beginning to put a string of passes together. That one to Pierce. That's his third straight, Jack Trudeau's. On the stop again was George Dave. George Davis, I should say, was out from Hat Peterson. Jack has time here, but he can't find anybody down the field. He's got to go short once again. Pierce on a short crossing panner, trying to make the best of it, but he picks up the five yards that they lost on the penalty. Get a second down to nine. Everybody's put way out. Clock running at 327. Illinois trying to get anything going right now. Trudeau over the middle. David Williams on the receiving end, but again, it's short. Now, you can go with that short stuff, Will, when you don't have penalties, but if you're only picking up four or five yards per pass play, when you got to go first and 15, it gets touchy. This is Dan Worth coming up to make the stop for Iowa. Why is it, Jim, that Jack has to go short? Why aren't the long men open? Well, they're going with a three-deep zone, and they're dropping off all their linebackers underneath with deep drops. There's just nothing there. Illinois, one out of five of third down conversions this first half. Iowa coming with everybody. Great interception. Rick Schmidt all the way down to inside the 10. That is the second interception this season for Rick Schmidt. He just came in and took it away. And that is the second time in this game that Jack Trudeau has been intercepted after going over 200 passes without any interceptions. It was a great read by Schmidt. Jack saw the blitz coming. His check off is go to the tight end right there, number 11. Schmidt reads it, picks the ball off, steps in front of Bozo, and he wants touchdown right now, giving a move on Trudeau. Well, Jack, you won't go down as a tackler. And once again, Hawkeyes have great field position. It is first to go to go at the nine yard line. Chuck Long. It's six. Scott Halverson brings it home. And we got a blowout. First rate. Good coordination between Chuck Long and Halverson. Halverson takes it down the field five yards, takes an out pattern, then curls it back to the inside along the end line. Long read the pattern well, and the ball was right there on the numbers. Rob Howland in to attempt the point after. He's been perfect so far today. Point afters, and again, he's good. So with 2.31 remaining in this first half of play, it's all Iowa, 49-0. The widest Iowa victory margin in this series, and this is the 50th meeting between these two schools, came way back in 1899. Illinois picked up one first down in the final two minutes of the first half, but failed to move the ball past their own 44. That's the end of the first half of the score. Iowa 49, and Illinois nothing. Feel the lather, the sand is brisk. No one does it quite like I'm Sugar Ray Leonard, and I would like to invite you to visit your local parks and recreation facilities. The Life Be In It program focuses on recreation activities that are fun, inexpensive, and wholesome. Take a walk, ride a bike, swim, or fly a kite. Take a friend and visit your local recreation facilities today, and tell them Sugar Ray sent you. Life Be In It. This message is brought to you by the NRPA and your local parks and recreation agents. Hi, I'm Tom Watson, with a tip to take the fear out of sand play. Weaken your grip, turn your hands counterclockwise, and point the left thumb straight down the shaft. This keeps the club face open at impact and gets the ball out consistently. And here's another tip that will help make your golf more enjoyable. Subscribe to Golf Digest. Golf Digest can help any player who wants to get more fun out of golf. 
starting with playing editors like Watson and Nicholas, who tell you how they play the game, and the teachers at the world-famous Golf Digest Instruction Schools, who show you how you can play better. You'll get features on the Pro Tours, the latest in golf equipment, and the monthly tournament and TV guide. Order a full year of Golf Digest for only $11.97, more than half off the cover price. And you'll also get free this special booklet, Tom Watson's Putting Secrets, 48 pages of stroke-saving advice. Call toll-free 800-527-9400. Call now, 800-527-9400. Remember, weaken your grip to strengthen your sand play, and read Golf Digest every month. It is a dark, dismal halftime here at Kinnick Stadium, and it's a 49 to nothing football game in favor of Iowa. And, Jim, I think we've run out of things to say that we're a little bit surprised right now. Yeah, well, what can you say when you're you're down 49 to nothing? And it's an absolute blowout. Uh, as you said earlier in the first half, the only thing you can play for now is a little bit of pride if you're in Illini, and th that's all they can play for. I mean, it'd be too much to ask for a miracle comeback uh, being down 49 to nothing. So you hope at halftime, I would say, Mike White says, hey, you, you, you start chastising these guys on this, hey, your pride's on line. You've got to do something in this second half to, to bring back some respectability because they have absolutely none right now. We'll be right back to take a look at some surprising halftime statistics in a moment. Hey, Kathy, what's cooking? Well, Hollywood wants to do a movie about my life. Big deal. Oh, you didn't see my limousine parked outside. Sure. <gasps> I guess you didn't hear. I won six million bucks playing Lotto. Did you really care? No, but I couldn't. <laughs> Big deal. Hey, when was the last time you won six million bucks, Mr. Moneybag? Lotto, it's a big deal. Oh, hey, fellas. What? Free champagne and caviar tomorrow. <laughs> Give me a light. Go. Uh, Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. Want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste? Don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Thank you. Because everything else is just a light. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Bill, I got some advice for you. It uh, won't help your golf game, but it'll do wonders for your wallet. I'm listening, Jay. I've been buying and selling stock through Charles Schwab. Schwab, he's a discount broker. Right, I've been saving 50, 60, sometimes over 70% on commissions. Well, I've heard of Schwab, but frankly, I've wondered what kind of service I might get from a discount broker. Schwab will surprise you. I've never had better service or faster trade executions anywhere. And of course, there's no sales pressure. Well, good, I hate sales calls and I like to save money. Schwab sounds like my kind of broker. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-453-8500, toll free. That's 800-453-8500. Charles Schwab, a Bank America company, member SIPC. Well, the halftime stats, Jim, are surprising. That one especially 49 to nothing in favor of Iowa over Illinois. And I think basically these stats reflect the game. And really, it's probably not as close as these stats reflect. No, I think the score reflects exactly how both teams have played. I guess the best description I've heard today of uh, what's happened is a complete dismemberment of the Illini. And we'll be right back with our second half kickoff after these messages from your local station. A lot of companies have names that sound like Roto-Rooter. Well, they may sound like Roto-Rooter, but when you have a clogged line or drain, you're gonna find out something. They don't work like Roto-Rooter. So don't take chances. Call the real Roto-Rooter. We can clear any drain in the house in minutes. Suburban Landscape will design or design and install a setting to complement your property, your lifestyle, and you. Suburban has select locally grown plants and plants from specialty growers located all across the country. Suburban designs your groupings with plant location, size, wind exposure, and growth habits for this climate in mind. Do it all or part at a time. Suburban has a payment plan for you, too. Choose Suburban Landscape because we're noticeable.
I'm about to show you how you can fight drafts and frosty windows with this window insulator kit from 3M. You just stick it in place from the inside, heat it with a hairdryer, and the wrinkles disappear. Airtight and clear as glass. Now you can see how cold it is out there without feeling it in here. Look for the 3M window insulator kit in the tartan plaid package. Find 3M products available at your nearest farm and fleet location. For America, there's something brand new down at Hardee's. Announcing the new quarter pound cheeseburger at Hardee's. It's thick and juicy, like Hardee's Big Deluxe and Bacon Cheeseburger. Try the thick, juicy quarter pound cheeseburger, brand new at Hardee's. Hardee's. It is an awfully chilly and cold damn day here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. And despite the fact the game has been lopsided, the Iowa fans have not left. This is still pretty much a full stadium. A nice high kick. No return by Keith Jones, so Illinois will get it first and ten at the 20-yard line. Well, the Illini didn't have a lot going in the first half. Jack Trudeau got a few things going late in the half when basically Iowa was giving up the short pass, but that's been about it. Well, as we said, Will, at a halftime now, you, you, the Illini, they play for some amount of respect. Their heads are going to be hanging low on their trip back to Champaign, but maybe it can raise a half an inch if they do something in this second half. Well, Jack Trudeau more than likely will be looking for percentage passes to the short receivers. Cap Bozo, the tight end. Good for a handful up to about the nine-yard line. So Cap Bozo now has become somewhat of a used weapon now, late in the first half, and now the first play in this quarter as George Davis makes a stop for Iowa. There's Jack looking downfield first, now going to the tight end, Camp Bozo. I believe that Bozo delayed a little bit at the line, slow block, then took out into the pattern, left him open, close to a first down. 14.25 remaining here in this third quarter of play. The Illini break it out, second down and one. That is the longest first down gain Illinois has had in this football game. That's Thomas Rooks. It's Keith Jones, and that should be enough for a first down. Illinois did not get many first downs in that first half. Here's a pitch out to 36, Keith Jones picking up the first down. You'll see a lot of black jerseys out there, though. Wasn't much of a hole, but enough for a first down. And that was the first carry of this game for Keith Jones. 14 minutes to go in the third quarter. Trudeau. A short pass. Jones on the receiving end. So right now, Jack Trudeau is beginning to, to look like he usually looks. He got a string of passes going in the late, latter part of the second quarter. Now he's two for two here in this opening moment of the third quarter. Jack looking downfield first. Now going to, to Jones on a little flare pattern. Good block right there out in front of him. Another good gain for the Illini. Jack Trudeau has passed for about 122 yards so far in this game, but he's been picked off four times. Thomas Brooks has some room. And he runs over the top of Richard Pryor, which takes him doing because Pryor goes 6'3", 231. That's a quick trap that we've seen so often run by the Illini. Guard pulls, traps on the tackle, good haul, first down. Rooks has carried the ball five times. His first half numbers gave him 11. That carry was good for 12. First and 10. Illinois trying to get across the midfield strike. A lot of time. Just couldn't hang on. Yeah, Usher, Usher, Usher just couldn't hang on. Usher just trying to run with the football be before he has control. Ball was there. You know, Jack Trudeau came into this game with 10 interceptions, but he had put a string together of none. He's had four picked off so far today. He is having somewhat of the kind of game that Chuck Long had late last week against Ohio State. The results may be the same, but they don't seem to be quite as devastating. Get a second down and 10, the ball to 46. It's on the ground with Keith Jones. 
Picks up a couple. George Davis on the stop. Will, I'll tell you, it was an excellent job by Richard Pryor, the outside linebacker. Here we'll see Jones on the pitch, turning it upfield. You'll see number 99 right there. Take on the block of Anthony Williams, make the tackle for a short gain. So far in this drive, the line I have not been confirmed with a third down yet. This will be the first third down play of this drive. On the day, Illinois is one out of six in converting. Trudeau to David Williams. And the line are marching. That'll be a first down for Illinois. On the stop is Jay Norville. Norville, one of the many that have picked off a Trudeau pass today. Sprint out by Jack again, the left side. Williams open. Norville coming in to make the stop, but late. Not in time to prevent another first down. The Illini march it into Iowa territory. Stephen Williams in the game now for Illinois. Also David Boatwright, number 88. Thomas Brooks. The trap doesn't spring for him as George Davis makes a stop for Iowa. Good job by number 37, George Davis, filling that hole, stopping Thomas Rooks. 11.44 to go in this third quarter of play. Mike side, Will Teeman with Jim Grabowski. You've just joined us. It's a surprise here as you look at Thomas Rooks try to get a handful of yardage. It is a 49-0 game, Iowa leading Illinois. Nobody would have ever imagined this would have been the case. On second down and eight. Sprinting out. Jack Trudeau. He's in big trouble. Thomas Rooks makes the most of a not so good situation. Well, give credit to the Hawkeye secondary. Jack had time to throw the ball, could not find a receiver open. You'll see now he has time. He's looking downfield, can't find anybody. He's looking, he's looking across field now. Thought he was gonna throw. Now turning back into the rush, and Jack shouldn't do that. He does not have the speed, but he does get the ball off to Thomas Rooks to prevent a big, big loss. David Hayden was the one who provided a big rush that time on third down and 12. Thomas Rooks, the only receiver, I should say, the only running back right now, as Jack Trudeau sets. He's looking. Jack Trudeau is throwing strikes. The receivers are not hanging on. Nate Career covering. Stephen Pierce was the intended receiver. And when your primary guys can't hang on, your offense is dead. There again, you'll see right now the strike going to Stephen Pierce. Jack under some pressure. Now he finds Pierce open. Now Pierce is, takes his eye off the football. Look, right there, he tried to run with it, but he took the, his eye off the ball, and it goes incomplete. Chad Little in the punt for Illinois. It sounds strange to say, but in the big scope of the first half, he probably was the most productive and active Illinois player. He'll be punting from his own 50, or I should say own 49-yard line about midfield. Nobody back deep. He'll be going for the corner. Nice job by Little. And the line I down it inside the two. So Chad Little, despite the fact his teammates are having a rough goal, is looking like an all-pro punter right now. <laughs> Two very busy men today have been Chad Little for the Illini punting and Cook the kickoff man for Iowa. You know, Cook is a big guy. Remember Luke Rose, how big he was as a tackle? Yeah, Luke Rose is an offensive tackle. Yeah. The Hawkeye fans, despite the cold weather, root on the home team. A team leading right now 49 to nothing. Chuck Long has set two touchdown passing records already. He's passed for 256 yards as he brings out the Hawkeyes. A team that has lost only one time this year. David Hudson somehow found some room in there to give uh, Iowa some breathing room. 
Well, that's an excellent gain when you think you start on your own one-yard line. Let's watch the move by Hudson right here. He goes off tackle. He sees it being filled by Gleamy. Cut back to the inside, and it takes the offside linebacker, Bob Sebring, to make the stop. It's hard to imagine as slim as Hudson looks at he's 6'2 and 227. Tries it again. And again, he has good success with it. And that'll be a first down for Iowa. So what was a real field advantage with a one, now Iowa has just kept it down on the ground, and in two plays, I've got some room to roam. Well, once again, the Illini are getting beat up front. In all facets of the game, they've been being beat. Right there, good surge by that offensive line, driving those white jerseys back. And it's a first down for Iowa. Hudson has carried the ball 10 times for a net of 42 yards. Nice average of almost four and a half a carry. This time it's Ronnie Harmon. Ronnie Harmon just gets stripped up. Avery on the stop over there. Todd Avery had some help by Jay Lynch. And for the team that lives by the pass, Jim, they run pretty well. Here's what Harmon does so well. Run out of the eye formation. He has that ability to find some holes when there doesn't look like much there. And in, But for the shoestring tackle, Avery, Harmon picks up big, big yardage. The nice thing for Ronnie Harmon is, as he leaves the game, he's a fellow who has been banged up, and he gets a chance to rest. He's not needed right now. Check along. This time, Twin Early just can't get to it. Good pressure by the Illinois front four. You saw the Illini come with the blitz, but the Hawkeyes picked it up. Gave Long time to get rid of the football. Chuck Long, a good day so far. The most important thing Chuck Long has done, though, in this game is really hop on Illinois mistakes right away. 256 yards of passing. 8.52 to go in the third quarter. Long looking. This time is right on the money. Quinn Early, who's come into this ball game as a reserve receiver, has been very active. Again, when Long sees that the cornerbacks are off, he's going short. Little turnout patterns that the Illini are giving him, and he can take those all day. Right now, short drop. He's going all the way eight yard turnout pattern ball right there and another good gain for the Hawkeyes it is third down and two Iowa four of six four of seven on the afternoon Jack Long nice pass to Bill Happel and Bill Happel does this tremendous job of getting away from Todd Avery he was hit and he picks up five more finally James Finch makes a stop for Illinois exceptional right there except the run after the reception again another eight yard out look at the cushion Avery 43 is five yards off the ball when Happel makes that reception and if you give that kind of cushion well you could just pick them apart all day which they've done 841 to go in this third quarter it is now first and ten the ball resting at the 45 yard line and then some in Iowa territory as the Hawkeyes have it Hudson, the quick fullback for Iowa, gets the call. Hudson, a sophomore who won the job away from the three-time letter winner senior, Fred Bush. Bush was their guy, and then Hudson just took the job over. As you said earlier, well, he just doesn't look like he's 227 pounds. Looks like he has a thin frame. Second down five. Ball right at midfield. Check long, has time, and a completion. Well, when your quarterback has time to look right, look center, then look left to find his re a receiver open, you know the offensive line is doing the job. And for Scott Helverson, that is now his seventh reception of this football game. Look at the time that Long has once again. Going to Scott Halverson, who was all, all alone, really, until he made the reception. Then you see white jerseys. We're now looking at the Iowa highlight film for the year. Chuck Long. Loose football. That 
that's even a completed pass. Kevin Harmon picks it up as he is nailed in the back. Great rush by Alex Gibson, but it makes no difference. It's a completion, I think. Watch this. The ball is jarred loose. It's just as long as going to release it. It goes in the air, but alertly, there's Kevin Harmon looking back. He said, I'm going to get a reception. So, folks, when the ball's bouncing right, you can't beat it. Seven ten to go in this third quarter. It is second down and ten. It's a draw play. Look at that. David Hudson is having himself a field day right now. We talked about before this game started that really the running attack was Ronnie Harmon. The running attack now is anybody who has the football. There's Hudson, good hole. You'll see that the defensive linemen of Illinois are just bull rushing into the offensive, offensive linemen of the Hawkeyes and making no moves whatsoever. To put that in perspective, of Hudson's 67 yards of rushing, coming into this game, he only had rushed for 100 yards on the season. Chuck Long under pressure. Wide open is Bill Happel, but this time it's an interception going the other way. Mark Kelly, the ball a little underthrown, intended for Happel, but Kelly comes up with a big interception. That's his first of his career. Let's see here now. Long under pressure, he's rolling out, trying to avoid this rush. He's looking downfield. He sees Happel in the end zone right now. Gets rid of the football. We'll see a fine interception, one-handed by Mark Kelly. And one of the few mistakes that the Hawkeyes have made today. The Illini football continues in a moment. This buds for all that you do. Carlos, I need 100 of these by Friday. My friend, I'm retired. My son is running the business now. Oh. for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. The faces of America. America's individuals. America's strength. American General Life and Accident has known the people of America for 82 years. Working closely with America's individuals is the only way our agents know to develop an insurance program which meets your needs. We believe in America's individuals. We are American General Life and Accident Insurance Company. Hi, I'm Tom Watson with a tip to take the fear out of sand play. Weaken your grip. Turn your hands counterclockwise and point the left thumb straight down the shaft. This keeps the club face open at impact and gets the ball out consistently. And here's another tip that will help make your golf more enjoyable. Subscribe to Golf Digest. Golf Digest can help any player who wants to get more fun out of golf. Starting with playing editors like Watson and Nicholas who tell you how they play the game. And the teachers at the world famous Golf Digest instruction schools who show you how you can play better. You'll get features on the pro tours, the latest in golf equipment, and the monthly tournament and TV guide. Order a full year of Golf Digest for only $11.97, more than half off the cover price. And you'll also get free this special booklet, Tom Watson's Putting Secrets, 48 pages of stroke-saving advice. Call toll-free 800-527-9400. Call now, 800-527-9400. Remember, weaken your grip to strengthen your sand play. And read Golf Digest every month. The campaign, he filled in for Chuck Long that blowout game early. He was a top passer in the Big Ten. Mark Molasson. Aaron's got a flag. Well, you had to know that we were going to see Velasic soon. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> With a score 49 to nothing, you don't want to keep Long in there. Funny thing about Velasic, though, it's not like there's a major drop-off in talent. He, when he has been in, he's played quite well. 437 remaining here in this third quarter play. It's Iowa 49, Illinois nothing, and the walk-off is against Iowa. Bush coming in. You see number 35 there for Iowa. 
Quinn Early came in. It'll be interesting to see if Hayden Fry elects to put the ball in the air with a new quarterback. First down and 15. Molassic to pass. I guess that question got answered. Early just can't quite hang on to it. Lynch back there defending with Todd Avery. And Classic was very close to running over the line of scrimmage. Stopped just short, got the ball off. Not a very good pass. It's got to be tough for a fellow like Velasic to know that he's a gifted quarterback, but he's playing behind probably the most productive quarterback in the country. For sure, and he's a senior too, so this is his last chance. That's what you do later on in your life. You say, I, I played quarterback at, at, at Iowa, but I was unfortunate enough to play behind Chuck Long. 4.31 to go in this third quarter. And we have another flag. Looked like the left side of the line of Iowa jumped early. Number 61, crossed to the left tackle. Moved a little too soon. We should mention, Jim, that... Velasic can come back for a fifth year if he wants to. He has that option. Well, I didn't know that. Well, we have a lot of time to learn these things in this game. <laughs> right now, he's two out of three in penalties versus plays, and he's losing that battle. 429 remaining in the third quarter. It's getting dark here at Kennick Stadium. I wonder if there's a provision for night football without lights. Without lights, is right. Activity now as I was trying hard to get set up. The Hawkeyes have two tight ends in the game right now. Velasic to throw. Got a man open. Tell you what, Helverson was on his way if he gets the football. They were trying to hit the seam of the zone along the left side. Ed White, as safety, reacted back to the ball pretty well that time, and the ball was overthrown. We'll see Vlasic now. He's looking there all the way. He's not disguising where the ball is going at all. Right there, there's White. Paid more attention to Helverson than the football. A lot of Iowa players coming in now the game right now. We'll get to see a gang of them here before it's all said and done. 424 remaining in the third quarter. Setting up a screenplay. Just doesn't work that time. He had everything set up, but Illinois defense it perfectly. That screenplay is suicide when it, when it goes bad. There's just like nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, when you receive the football out there, no blockers in front of you. You all your, the only your opponents is what you see, and you get a little say, where can I go? No place. That's where you can go. Kevin Harmon saying, put my brother back in. the face of Daryl Usher. If you could replay a play and say, guess who won? Well, folks, we will see right here. The ball must have taken. Usher has done such a fine job all year receiving punts. What went wrong here? I have no idea, but it goes right off his face mask or, or his shoulder pad into the hands of Iowa. Well, we've seen a lot of inept play today, and there's a perfect example of it for the Illini. Mike Flagg, a tight end recovered for the Hawkeyes, and they're back on the attack again. That's Bayless, a reserve running back. Tries to turn the quarter, but he can't. Mark Taggart makes a stop. So Rich Bayless is now into the football game, a 6'1", 194-pound junior. It's a great chance for a lot of the Iowa players to get some playing time in. And we have all kinds of additions now to our own little uh, charts here. Find out new numbers. There's a penalty on the play. It looks like it's going to go against Iowa. You'll see that their huddle is, they've moved their huddle back 15 yards. And now the walk-off. Holding against Iowa. A 
Well, there's some happy Iowa fans on this chilly day in Iowa City. 3.38 remaining in the third quarter. The clock is moving. After a 49 to nothing half, we now have a nothing nothing half here in the third quarter. Nothing nothing quarter, I should say. Loose football. Velasca gets it back, barely. Mark is having a hard time out there. I, I mean, this half down both sides of the field, it, it looks terrible. I mean, if you Bumbles, were... drop snaps. If somebody just tuned in and they're going, wow, what a game, they would have never guessed the first half. There you see Vlasic just can't handle the snap from center. Second down and 20. Vlasic brings him out. A couple of wide receivers. Balls on the 27-yard line in Iowa territory. Rich Bayless, another one of these Iowa walk-ons, gets a few of those yards back. I think of all the teams we've seen in the Big Ten this year, Jim, Iowa probably has more productive walk-ons than anybody we've seen. Well, they got certainly a lot of people out there who do produce. Bayless struggling for a few more yards. Well, the clock has stopped at 2.55 here. Stopped at 2.25 to go into third quarter. 49-0, Iowa's leading Illinois. Mark Velasic brings him out. Rich Bayless and Fred Bush are now the running backs for Iowa. Bayless 13, Bush 35. I don't know how he got away from Jay Lynch, and he's still trying to get away. Nice pass, good reception. I mean, Jay Lynch gets a clear shot on him, doesn't wrap his arms around Vlasic. Vlasic gets the ball off. Let's see right there's Lynch. 19, there's a good block in front of him, though. 25, Marshall Cotton did knock Lynch out off his feet. And here's Dave Ina, 98, hanging on, but Bayless gets rid of the football, and he's got a reception right there. On fourth down, there was a punt, goes out of bounds, and Illinois gets it at about the 20-yard line. A cold day in Iowa City, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Iowa 49 and Illinois nothing. Before we begin the fourth quarter, let's take a brief look at the University of Illinois. I go into my library and all history rolls before me. I see the pyramids building. I hear the shouting of the armies of Alexander. I sit as in a theater. The stage is time and the play is the play of the world. Poet Alexander Smith wrote those words in the 19th century, but he could be describing this library, the library of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. This is the place where the world of research opens up to students and scholars. The University of Illinois library contains more than 11 million items. It's the largest state university library in the country, ranking behind only Harvard and Yale among all university libraries in the United States. Quantity isn't the whole story, obviously. We take a great deal of pride. I take a great deal of pride in the fact that we have this quantity of materials. But the quality of the collection, I think, uh, is equally important. And this is what interests me, and this is what has kept me here over the years. The University of Illinois Library consists of the main library, the undergraduate library, and 38 departmental libraries. All function as part of an integrated library system and the library contains the tools of learning. Books, manuscripts, maps, microfilm and microfiche, serials, newspapers, rare volumes. Robert Johansson has been a member of the history faculty since 1959. The library was a major factor uh, in my decision to come to the University of Illinois at that point. And I must tell you that it has been a major factor in my remaining here at the University of Illinois. For this library is, is uh, unexcelled, in my estimation, uh, in this country. And uh, whatever opportunities I may have had to go elsewhere have always been to institutions with inferior libraries. Back here at Kennick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. Mike Side, Will Teeman with Jim Grabowski. And if we take a look at these third quarter stats, they're getting closer, but the score is still pretty one way. 49-0 Iowa. 
What can you say, Will, when you look at just complete dominance in the score, in the statistics? It's, as you said, it's getting closer, but hey, it's out of reach. Have you ever seen a team score 49 points in one quarter? No, neither have I. I, uh, and I don't think I will today either. Basketball, does that count? <laughs> Jack Trudeau trying to get some momentum possibly moving on this team. Pierce overthrows him. Well, the thing that's amazing to me about the Iowa secondary is that they seem to come in threes. It's unbelievable. They're everywhere. Well, they're, they, they're playing a lot of zones, so you know, they got an area coverage, so when the ball's up in the air, they just react to the football, and that's why you're seeing three around the ball. Jack dropping back. He's looking to Pierce. Now, this has worked effectively throughout the day, but the ball is just thrown high. If the ball was right on target, Pierce was open by a step. And I've got to believe that the rain is really going to hamper any passing activity right now for anybody. Third down and 10. Illini batting 50-50 here and converting third down in this half. Pierce drops the football. There's a perfect example of what's happened to the Illini all Afternoon. When one facet of the offense does something right, the other facet breaks down. In this case, Jack had protection. He can find the receiver open. Pierce does get open, but he forgets one part. Hang on to the football. Ball right there certainly should have been caught, and you could see that Pierce had room to run the ball. Chap little to punt now for the line eye. He's had a season's worth of work today. He has the wind at his back, so he should probably get off a pretty good one. Except he never gets the ball. The Hawkeyes get it back. Well, well, we've said this all afternoon. How many times can you say it? Complete dominance by the Hawkeyes. Terrible mistakes. They were going to the up man, trying to run for the first down. He fumbles it. Hawkeyes come up with the ball. It doesn't matter. He wouldn't have got the first down any. He would have gone over to Iowa. First down and 10. The ball right down the 28-yard line. The Hawkeyes on the march again. Elastic to throw. Complete to Scott Halverson. Got Avery on the stop. The fans are at Kennedy Stadium despite the score the weather are not leaving. Yeah, I can't believe it. They really love this football team. Not that I can't believe they love this team. I can't believe they're still here. There we see right now, the stands are still loaded. It is first down and 10. The last second quarterback is one out of three for 10 yards. Filling in now for Chuck Long. Marshall Cotton on the carry. on the stop for Illinois. Iowa has used a gang of runners. Ronnie Harmon, Kevin Harmon, Rich Bayless, Marshall Cotton, David Hudson, Fred Bush. The only running back I have remotely left that they haven't used is Grant Goodman. He'll be in next. It is second down and six. Classic. Pass to Halverson. Iowa scores again. Well, it may be called back. A flag was thrown. They may say that it was a pick. Win early. Slanting in may have picked the safety. It's going against Iowa. It nullifies that touchdown. There's Vlasic. Good block out in front. There you'll see the pick right at the top of your screen. That was early. Making a pick on the safety. So that's going to bring up a third down situation and a long way to go. Ball resting just past the Illinois 30. The Hawkeyes must get to the eight for a first down. 
Classic. Setting up the screen pass. That's Marshall Cotton. Marshall Cotton can't get the job done. Bob Sebring on the stop for Illinois. Nice play, but it just wasn't long enough. Yeah, they had a pretty good screen set up. The Illini reacted well back to it. See right there. Now there's Cotton got the ball. Blockers out in front of him, but it's a reaction by 31 Sebring that prevents the big game. 13-27 on this football game. And Rob Howland is in to attempt for the second time a three-pointer. The mark will be at the 27, a 37-yard attempt. It's plenty long enough. And it's good. At 13-12 to go in this game, it's now Iowa 52 and Illinois nothing. Illini football continues after these local messages. At Walmart, we roll back the cost of living. You what? Walmart roll back the cost of living. We roll back prices throughout the store. Inflation is gone at Walmart. Now, that's what I like to hear. Last year, 8-ounce Armor All protectant was $2.74. Now it's rolled back to $2.38 every day. The Alpha 3 36-month battery was $36.86 last year. Now it's just $28.94. We've rolled back our everyday low prices throughout the store. Savings you can count on every day, on hundreds of products you use every day. At Walmart, we've stopped inflation in its tracks. We've rolled back prices to save you more every day. Come to Walmart and get the savings you deserve. We've rolled back the cost of living so you can live better for less. A whole lot less. Thanks, Walmart. That's real There's the butter. What was that? I'll check. <clears throat> Hi. Say hello to the buttery taste of Imperial Margarine. Imperial tastes so rich and creamy, you just might mistake it for butter. And frankly, we wouldn't mind if you did. You gotta go there again. Where? Happy Jack's Waterbeds. Why? Because they've done it a second time. Oh, bought out another distributor's buyout sale. Yes, $400,000 worth of waterbed merchandise at rock bottom prices. Like now, they can sell a $200 super single waterbed for your kids for $119. The contemporary waterbed, $300, now $149. Or the $500 Rosewood waterbed. Elegant. Cut to $299 at Happy Jack's now through Sunday. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Hardee's, where good people go for good food. First down, then putting it back to the Hawkeyes. There is 9.29 left to play in the game. Chuck Velasic to pass. A lot of time. He's going for six. Halverson is open. They're going to mark it incomplete. It's a call incomplete. Well, the official was right there. The fans don't like it. But from my viewpoint, I thought it was a reception. That was Jim Morrow, by the way, the intended receiver. It was 47, not 87. There was Steve Vlasic going long all the way. Morrow is open. Avery will see 43 running, trying to catch up to the football. The, over his shoulders. Well, folks, I don't know. That looked like he may have had control. But it doesn't really matter. It's 52 to nothing. <laughs> That's true. The outcome of the game will not depend on any call made by the official today. Second down and 10. Velasic going to the shortstop right now. Morrow tries to do a juggling act. This time he can't hang on. Well, Velasic's stats have not been all that spectacular. That's his fifth attempt, one completion for 10 yards. Going to Morrow once again. The ball just off Morrow's fingertips. Right there, Todd Avery, 43, almost comes up with an interception. Morrow comes back, prevent the interception. He couldn't make a completion himself. Then he prevents the interception. Third down and 10. The ball at about midfield. That's what you call good defense by a receiver. 
9.15 to go in this contest. Palasic. Wide open. Wide open was Quinn Early. And it's an Iowa first down. Mark Kelly makes a stop. Got some help that time from Jay Lynch of Illinois. Jay Lynch on the not much of a fake there. That partial roll, see, now you're getting the look to throw back. That freezes the safety. The ball right on target to early. Mark Kelly, 37, comes up to make the stop, but not in time if another first down for Iowa. Clock running at 8.52. In motion is Jim Morrow. On the carry with a big hole right there is Grant Goodman. Grant Goodman's not going to be deprived. He don't care what the score is. He just doesn't care. And you can see number 22, Goodman, there. He wanted to go all the way, as any good runner does. Big hole. Watch the hole right there. Good lead block in front by number 17. Goodman making the cut to the outside. <laughs> nice run. Yeah. Nice run for the third or fourth tailback. Rick Bayless, good block for him. Tim Sennett, number 17, out in front. Made a good block. First down, 10, the ball to 16. That's Goodman. That's six. Well, there's a happy young man. Two fine runs. And he gets six points. And now the blowout becomes worse. seen 11 years of football for Illinois and this by far the worst showing there's Goodman running through a big gaping hole no one touches him he's a happy young man Rob Rob Bayless in just a Rob Howland is in to attempt the point after and it's good 59 to nothing Iowa leading Illinois that is the worst beating Iowa has given Illinois. This is the worst beating in the line I have taken since 1960. We didn't go back any further than 60. We thought we'd stop right there. No, I don't think we want to go back any further. What difference does it make? This telecast is authorized in the rights granted by the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois and the University of Iowa. In a rebroadcast or at the reproduction of the description and the accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois is strictly prohibited. And the announcers for today's game have been selected by Rasmus and Associates and approved by the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois. Illinois have failed to move the ball on its next possession, and Iowa did likewise. It's now the Illini's last chance to score. Second down nine. The ball is at the 38-yard line in the Illini territory. 4.02 to go in this game. The moon is about to come out here in Iowa City. Bennett. David Williams again on the reception and close to a first down. Believe it or not, a nine-yard reception is one of the bigger ones Illinois had today. Stop by Jim Riley, number 95. So Williams has nine receptions. So at 338, there's something to look at for Illinois, the Williams countdown. <laughs> well, you see Williams along the sideline, not running out of bounds. He's trying to pick up as much yardage as he can. It's close to the first down. Second down, about a yard to go. Illinois is about 33% converting today on third down. Third and one right now. Long count by Jim Bennett. 